Hello grade 12s and welcome to this video on galvanic cells, also known as voltaic cells. In this video we're going to look at what these cells are and we are also going to look at the structure. What different parts of these galvanic cells are there for, what purpose they serve, why we have a salt bridge, why we have electrodes, etc. And to make things or to bring things into context, we're going to be looking at the zinc copper galvanic cell. Just to bring things together okay it is the one that is used in your book as an example so to start off we know that some redox reactions are spontaneous reactions that's what we know we know that we can use our table of standard electrode potentials to see if our reaction is spontaneous or not if it is spontaneous just a reminder from product to product if you circle them and draw in your line, you're going to get a positive gradient. And that is how you know from your table of standard reduction potentials that you have a spontaneous redox reaction. Now, in your galvanic cells, we have spontaneous reactions. But before learning about your galvanic cells, you just learned about redox reactions. So, if we place a few substances in the same beaker, so we put zinc solid, here's the zinc solid as an electrode, or just as a little, well, solid piece of zinc. We put that into solution, where in the solution we have copper sulfate, CuSO4. Remember, copper sulfate is ionic, so in solution it is already broken up into its ions. Copper, 2 plus ions, and SO4, 2 mi minus ions that are just floating around. So when you put the substance in solution with zinc solid, then a spontaneous reaction will start to occur between them. Specifically, our zinc is going to lose electrons. If it loses electrons, it is oxidized. We say that it is called the reducing agent. It's going to lose its electrons to the copper ion. And when the copper ion gains those electrons, we say that the copper ion is being reduced. If it is reduced, then it is the oxidizing agent. And that is basically what's going to happen here. We have that our zinc loses electrons. So this is my oxidation half reaction. The copper gains the electrons. So it is the reduction half reaction. And bringing those two together, we have the net reaction. What's nice about this reaction is that copper ions in solution are blue so you will actually see how the copper ions disappear as the color of the solution becomes less and less blue once all of the copper ions have become copper solid our solution will become colorless this is how we can actually see this reaction taking place now this is basically what is going to happen your zinc in the solution so these zinc solids are going to enter the solution and become Zn2 plus and the copper is going to go there gain electrons and we're going to get copper solid that is why in the beginning you see this zinc right in you put it into solution the reaction takes place and in the end its color has changed where it has been in the solution. That is actually the copper that has formed on that piece of metal. All right. So this reaction happens spontaneously on its own. You just put it in, leave it, and it will take place. And you will see the reaction take place. What is important to note, very, very important to note, is that reactions in galvanic cells are exothermic. So you will normally notice that the temperature rises in these cells, which is easy to remember because your galvanic cells are like your batteries, which tend to get hot. If you look at your laptop battery, if you look at your cell phone, they tend to get hot over time because they are galvanic cells. So what we do is we make use of this reaction that happens spontaneously. Remember, there's an exchange of electrons here. Electrons are being given by the zinc 
to the copper. So what we do is we separate the two half reactions by placing them in separate beakers. And in doing so, we ensure that electrons move through the external circuit. So basically, we are taking this reaction that happens spontaneously and making better use of it. We are allowing these electrons to travel a further distance so that they can travel through our devices, whether they be light bulbs or laptops, and making use of or creating what we call a galvanic cell. So here we have the zinc copper galvanic cell. In this galvanic cell, we have an electrolyte on the one side in our one half um, half cell, the zinc half cell. In solution, we have zinc ions and sulfate ions. The electrode is made up of zinc. This electrode is connected to the other electrode using wire. We have over here a voltmeter so that we can detect that electrons are truly flowing. Grade 12, please remember that the flow of electrons is not the same as current. Current will happen in the opposite direction because current is the flow of positive charges. So current flows in that direction. Okay, in our solution on the other side, we have an electrolyte, our copper sulfate electrolyte. And in the middle, we have what we call a salt bridge. We're going to explain this salt bridge in a moment. But for now, just understand that we are basically just splitting the two reactions, the two half cells, that we can have these electrons travel a further distance apart. In reality, this is how your cell looks. Of course, your battery, your normal Duracell battery, is connected in a far better way, smaller, more compact, but it's basically this um, reaction or this sort of setup just in a smaller space all right so before i explain how this works i would like to take a look at the cell structure so they say in your galvanic cell the two half reactions are in two separate half cells this is not the same as in an electrolytic cell that is why it's important each half cell contains an electrode we have an anode and a cathode in each half cell, we also have an electrolyte. Now, let's start off with the anodes and cathodes. An electrode is there to help complete the circuit. Instead of just placing wire into solution, we into a liquid solution or an aqueous solution, we use electrodes to connect the wire to the solution. In this case, our electrodes also take part in the reaction. We have an anode where oxidation takes place. How do we remember an ox? And we have the cathode where reduction takes place. How do we know? Red cat. An electrolyte is basically a solution which contains ions. Ions are charge carriers. Very important. So electrolyte is some solution which contains ions. Ions are charge carriers. They say that the electrodes are connected to each other in an external circuit consisting of conducting wires and a voltmeter. Of course, you could also make use of an ammeter. You could use a light bulb to, just to show that there is actually current flowing. This is not an essential part of our circuit. It is there to show us that there is actually current flowing. They say the circuit is completed by a salt bridge. The salt bridge is this device over there. Okay, here is a definition for your electrolyte. They say it's a solution, liquid, dissolved substance that contains elect that conducts sorry, electricity through the movement of ions. Of course, you guys need to remember that you must learn your definitions that have been given to you by the department. Now, the salt bridge is a very important part of the circuit. Here are the functions of the salt bridge, which you need to learn off by heart. The salt bridge separates the electrolytes so that they don't mix. It's basically holding this part and that part together. 
but in such a way that what is contained in here does not mix with what's contained in there. Because if that happens, then electrons will not flow through the external circuit. So that's part of the duty of the salt bridge. It ensures that the electrolytes do not mix. Number two, it completes the circuit. Our charges are going to basically flow like that. Okay, not in the way that you are used to. We don't just have electrons flowing. We have electrons flowing and then ions flowing. But I will explain that in more details a bit later. It also supplies a path through which ions can move to restore neutrality. So basically what we are saying there is for every electron that leaves this half reaction, we basically need a negative ion to exit the salt bridge to ensure that on this side we have neutrality. Neutrality, zero charge. On this side over here, for every electron that enters, oh guys, I'm explaining this the wrong way, sorry, sorry, sorry. What I should be saying is, okay, but in order to do this, I'm going to have to explain the, the reaction. What happens here is my zinc ions they enter the solution so for every zinc ion that goes into the solution we need a sulfate a negative ion to exit and on this side for every copper ion that becomes solid we are losing positive charge so we need positively charged ions to enter the solution and basically maintain a zero charge on each side that's what we mean by neutrality okay so that's how they complete the circuit and ensure neutrality i don't think i've explained this sufficiently but i will explain it a bit better in a moment your salt bridge is basically just an upturned u-tube a u-tube is a glass tube that that's literally it and what we do is we take some solution some ionic solution even salt like nacl we put it inside there and you'll notice that there are cotton plugs over here. We literally just take cotton plugs and we place them in there and then turn it around. The cotton plugs are just to help ensure that while you turn it around, all of the solution doesn't just fall out. That is what they do. Okay, so that's your salt bridge. Take note of those functions. I'd like to go back up to this zinc um zinc copper galvanic cell and i'm going to explain what a galvanic cell is and how it works using this we know the different parts that make it up now i'm going to explain how it works so we have the zinc half half cell in your zinc half cell you have your zinc electrode and then you will have some ionic solution that contains zinc ions. This is very important. So a substance like zinc sulfate. In your zinc half cell, now remember we are dealing with zinc and copper. The normal reaction is that the zinc solid is going to react with copper sulfate in order to form copper, sol copper um, solid plus zinc sulfate. That is how the normal reaction looks. Okay, but now we've separated them. So what is happening in your zinc half cell is oxidation. Your zinc is going to go and become zinc ions. All right, so it's exactly the same reaction. It's just taking place over distance. So zinc solid is going to become zinc ions. This is an oxidation reaction because we go from a charge or, sorry, an oxidation number, not a charge. We go from an oxidation number of zero to an oxidation number of two plus right we say that zinc loses electrons so it is oxidized and we say that zinc is the reducing agent the reaction in that half cell is zinc solid becomes zinc ions plus um plus um electrons now these electrons here see when this reaction takes place so let's just look at this when this reaction takes place, our zinc solid, remember this is made up of a whole lot of zinc atoms. 
there's my zinc atom what is going to happen is my zinc atom is going to lose its two electrons that are going to flow through the circuit and then it is going to become zn2 plus that will float around in solution and that's going to happen with each one of these zinc atoms okay that's what's happening in the one react one side now of course if my zinc solid is becoming ions then its mass is going to decrease as time goes by what you're going to see is your zinc electro that was complete starts to become less and less. It starts to shrink because we are losing zinc solid and they're becoming zinc ions. Right? Beyond that, we say that the donated electrons collect on the zinc electrodes, electrode and therefore it is negative. So when we look at this, we say that our zinc electrode, since the negative charges collect here, this is the negative um, electrode. Now, just to take things a bit back, this is our oxidation half cell. So oxidation takes place at the anode, anox. So whenever you have a galvanic cell, your anode is negative. This is important to note and to memorize. It happens in the opposite way for electrolytic cells. That's why the section is so confusing. Sorry, 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 guys. Okay, and then, of course, as I've explained, the electrons move through the external circuit to the copper half cell. Now, the copper half cell, the copper half cell consists of copper, a copper electrode, and in solution, we have copper sulfate. So our solution needs to contain copper ions. It doesn't need to be copper sulfate. It could be copper nitrate. It could be copper any other spectator ion. But in this case, we're using copper sulfate. The copper sulfate over here goes from being 2 plus copper to 0 as an oxidation number on the copper. So that means that our copper is being reduced. It gains electrons. The half reaction is the copper ions gain electrons to form copper solid. So going back up to this, the electrons come around. They come to this side. And as soon as they get there, what is going to happen is these copper ions that are in solution are going to gain electrons. And they're going to form copper solid. So we are going to lose copper ions from the solution as they become copper solid. Now, if this happens, then it means that that electro electrode is going to grow. We're going to have copper forming on that electrode. So we say the mass of the copper electrode increases. Electrons removed from the copper electrode um, sorry, electrons are removed from the copper electrode and it is therefore positive. So when we are looking at this cell, then we have red cat. Reduction takes place at the cathode and the cathode is positively charged. Very important because it is the other way for electrolytic cells. So please just take note of this and that. But guys, this is basically how this happens. Now, again, our salt bridge is there to keep neutrality. In this case, they said that our salt bridge is filled with Na2SO4. That means in solution, we have Na plus ions and SO4, two minus ions floating around. On the left-hand side, we have positive ions joining the solution. So what that means is that the sulfate ions in solution will go towards the left side. On the right hand side, we are losing copper ions, positive ions, as they become solids. So this over here, the positive ions in the salt bridge are going to go on into the left side, into our copper half cell. Okay, um, and that is basically how your galvanic cell works. We can give you any type of galvanic cell. Um, but for now, this is the galvanic cell that we are dealing with. In this galvanic cell, we have our spectator ions. I can ask you to write down a net reaction 
but I'm sure that you all know how to do so. Make sure that you familiarize yourself with the salt bridge and its functions. Um, but that is basically it. I hope that you guys understand. There's a lot to memorize here. If you have any questions, please be sure to let me know. In the next video, we are going to be looking at the cell notation, how to write out the cell notation for galvanic cells.